Welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is Shema Thomas and this is my beautiful wife, Sarah Thomas. Today we are going to be talking about how the Lord brought us together to be a married couple. And this video, you're gonna get both perspectives. You're gonna get mine, you're gonna get hers. And hopefully you're edified by our testimony because we really want you guys to know that the Lord, he does a lot of crazy yes. things, especially between us two. But um, yeah, I just wanna give the floor to my wife and I want her to just share about how the Lord brought us together, talk about when we first met talk about start there where we first met how we met and then what happened from that point on so okay so like he said you guys this is a crazy <laughs> testimony but god brought us together like there's no way that he didn't because he did so this is going to be a story time get your snacks get your drinks and just relax because we're about to go through it all okay so how we met is we both um followed this we both follow this pastor named Pastor David Lynn. And at the time that we met, he was coming to North Carolina to plant a church in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I'm actually from North Carolina. So where we met up at, it was not even two hours away from me. So the morning of the event, which was November 20th, I believe, or 19th, I really can't remember. Mm -hmm. Um, I had just gone off of work because I used to work overnight. So, I was kind of sort of back and forth within myself, like, should I go or should I not, you know? But something something in me, and I don't want to say something because I know what it is. It was the Holy Spirit telling me that I should go, and I didn't know why, but I just felt this unction to go. My mother actually ended up coming with me. So, yeah, and I had been wanting to evangelize, um, which is what this pl church plant was. It was a church plant plus a a chance for Christians to evangelize together. So that's what it was. So I ended up going and we got there around like, I can't remember, like 1 p.m. or 2 p.m. of November, 2021. And um, yeah, it was just a bunch of us Christians there, young, old, white, black, whatever color, you know, it was just unity there. So, you know, we're preaching, we are <clears throat> talking to people one on one, we're fellowshipping together. And next thing I know, honestly, I noticed him. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I noticed him, but, and I was thinking to myself, he's kind of cute, you know, like he's very, very handsome. Like he's very handsome. He was really like, Thank off. You. you're Appreciate welcome. You. <laughs> you're welcome. He was off to the side by himself, just chilling, you know. I remember what he had on, he had on all black. <laughs> He had on a black hat because it was really cold. He had on a black hat. He had on a black coat, black pants, and his book bag that he always wears. And <laughs> trying to say I need a new book bag or something. Always no, I'm not right. saying that. I'm just saying. Anyway, uh, y'all know how uh, you can tell when somebody plays sports. Like that's kind of how he was dressed, like an athlete. Um but an anointed one like i could honestly just feel even though i never talked to him i could feel that he was just different like his face he was so serious but you know he didn't look mean but he looked serious which you know that really that really stood out to me but so yeah i noticed him but then we kept doing our own thing the rest of the day um so the way the first time i heard him preach I was like, <laughs> who is this? Like, I was even more, I want to say attracted to him. I was even more attracted to him, just attracted to him just by the way he was preaching because I had already noticed his um, demeanor, but then when he actually opened up his mouth, it was like, it was crazy. Praise God for that. that so, yeah, um, I guess I'll just continue to go talk I'll wait, talk about wait, wait. I gotta share my part. <laughs> okay, go. You share one part, I share another part. All right, let's go. All right. All right. So yeah. <laughs> what happened was on my side, referring to that specific part of the testimony, I drove all the way from Philly to get to North Carolina. So this was about eight and a half hours because I had to drive an hour also out of my way to pick up another brother in Christ to go all the way down there. So I remember the night prior to that, I was working and then I told the Lord as I was going to sleep, I said, Lord, if you want me to go to this event, then wake me up for it. 
and I didn't set an alarm. I didn't do anything. I was planning and hoping that he wouldn't wake me up so I could just miss it because I was so tired. But I woke up around three o'clock in the morning with this supernatural energy to just get up. I was so zealous. And I said, I've never felt this kind of energy in my life. And I only slept for about one hour. And I kid you not, I heard a voice say that these are the events that you meet your wife at. Now, at the time, I wasn't thinking of a wife. I didn't even want a wife at the time. Just going to be honest, I was just focused on evangelism, focusing on winning souls, focusing on God. And when I heard that voice say, these are the events that you meet your wife at, I said, hmm, okay, cool. Wasn't really focused about it. Really, wasn't really focused on it, I should say. And then I got in the car, I drove, and I picked up the brother in Christ, and we got some snacks on the road. We drove straight down to North, North Carolina, praying on the road, listening to the word, just fellowshipping with one another. And I finally arrived to the specific location that Pastor David Lynn was at and that my wife was at, Sarah was at. I had on, I don't think it was all black. I had on a navy blue. I think it was all black. No, I had a navy blue uh, jumpsuit on and then I had the black pants, black shoes, black book bag, oh. black hat. I was ready for war because I know <laughs> from Pastor David Lynn's videos, I know that they come at him, it's crazy. So my whole face, was like Flint, I didn't care about nothing. I thought that I was probably gonna die that day. So I was just saying, hmm, <laughs> preach the word with fire, or fire, or fire. I was in spiritual warfare mode 100%. Wasn't thinking of her, wasn't thinking of anybody else. I was just in the moment and just honored and humbled to be equipped by David Lynn to mm -hmm. preach and to do evangelism. <clears throat> so it actually happened where one of the leaders that he has at one of the churches, they called me out and they said, we want you to preach. So I just got on the mic and I preached beside him and the person who called me on. And then that was that. So this brother, oh, this brother is uh, brother Shaman. We met in DC. Actually, he came with a brother Elijah while I was up in DC. He's from Philadelphia. And I was just so inspired by this brother's preaching that I drove four hours up to, to go preach at an Eagle game with him. And now he's returning the favor by coming down here from Philadelphia. Which is what, what, like eight hours drive? Eight hours. Eight, eight hours. Wow. And, and I just want you to hear some words from this brother because he truly has the Holy Spirit and he preaches fire. So here you go, brother. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Jesus Christ is King. And I want to let you know something right now. He has delivered me from generational curses of anger, murder, pornography, and he broke those chains immediately. And I want to let you know that you can go to nutritionists, you can go to doctors, you can go to health professionals, but Jesus Christ, he is the wonderful counselor. What happened next? So what happened next? I want to, where, okay, so where I left off at is, I think mm. we should talk about when we actually talked for the first time. I remember the whole, um, after we had stayed in that area and preached for a while and sung and worship, worship together, we began mm -hmm. walking to the next destination. Um, we were walking, and he always says he doesn't remember this part, but hopefully he will. We were walking towards the next desti destination, and then I remember somehow he ended up beside me. And I remember I was, you were on my left side, and then... Some I think I started the conversation because like you were literally right there. It it would have been weird to not say something. That's how close you were to me. Yeah. Not that you probably meant to be that close, but mm -hmm. yeah. So we started talking, and then I remember specifically I was like so because I had just finished hearing him preach. So I was like, do you do this full time? Like that wasn't that day, babe. Yes, it was. No, it, wasn't. it was the first day. Yes, it was. It was. I, no, it was because I remember I had I had on that head and that plaid shirt. I remember. Yeah, that's not the that was during the that was the, first the Carolinas day. game. I have the pictures. No, it wasn't that day. I was not talking to you that I don't I was not talking to you the first day. I didn't talk to anyone the first day. Really? No, I didn't talk to anyone. I was so low. That's when I was with so and so. I'm not gonna say her name for the sake of the video, but I was with her that whole time. Really? With Mike the whole time. Okay, so, so so we didn't talk at all the first day. No, it was the second day we were walking from the Carolina Stadium. After oh. I had preached. Okay, well, everybody makes mistakes. Thank okay, you, so, Holy Spirit, right, for bringing so these is, things to my remembrance. Well, amen. Okay, so let's just go to the second day because... <laughs> <I go. laughs> let's just go to the second day then because that's when I, that's when we started talking. Yeah. Um, that's when we first conversated. I should converse. Converse. 
that's when we first conversed mm -hmm. um so as i was saying we were walking somewhere and i remember um i had I, i'd been hearing him preach the whole time <clears throat> like off and on and i remember like i said i was asking him so do you do this full time are you like do you work what's your name how old are you things like that and <laughs> all those questions <laughs> Don't, okay, it, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like an interview. The conversation just pretty much flowed. Let's just leave it there. It just flowed. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I remember telling him that I wanted to travel and do ministry. We were just talking about ourselves. And um, then I remember he was like, all right, I'm going to go here. I remember you actually had went somewhere else. And then the the day went on. And then we didn't mm -hmm. talk anymore in, until that night, the second night, because it was a two-day conference event. We didn't talk anymore that night. Am I good? Am I <laughs> on track? We didn't talk yeah, anymore. Yeah, we didn't. No, yeah, we, we didn't talk anymore that night until we went to fellowship at the at the place a fellowship that they had. So yeah, you can you can start off here. Yeah. So what she's speaking of when we had that conversation when she was asking me questions, I was asking her questions. It was after we preached at the Carolinas Panthers game. <clears throat> and we were walking to another destination and I happened to be walking alongside her. So we started to speak and she started to ask me what I did. And, you know, we just went back and forth. She told me that she wanted to be a missionary. And then that was when I said, hmm, nice. But at the time I wasn't attracted to her. I wasn't attracted to anyone there because I was just so sold out and focused on what God wanted to do. So can we pause here? Like, I just want to stress the fact of how, <laughs> like his demeanor, you guys, like I, I joke with him right now and and I tell him that, you know, like he looked like he was ready to meet somebody up. That's how serious he looked. No, like you look like nobody better not mess with me. Like, um, don't talk yeah. to me. None of that. Like, that's really how he looked. But... Set apart. <laughs> Set apart. <laughs> but whatever, you can continue. I just wanted to add that in there. Yeah. So we just started talking. And then I remember when it was a preaching March. So someone ahead was preaching and then we were just in a line with the the boards that have Jesus on them and stuff. And then I said, all right, I'm going to talk to you later. And I just went away to meet someone else because I was just trying to fellowship, get to know everyone. And then I believe after that <laughs> day, were you at any of the this was this okay. was the second night that the oh second, yeah this yeah, is the second so. okay all right yeah so this is the second night so after we did all of that after we did all the preaching after we were done being in the midst of the corrupted world we went back to a fellowship and it was a nice home it food. was yeah good food it was yeah. good pizza good wings everything it was just amazing that was probably one of the best times i had in a while just being around like-minded people that believe in the same things that we do like spreading the gospel not just in the church <clears throat> just right. To add that. right and then as i was at that home i was just sitting back and i was just relaxing and the lord reminded me because i completely forgot that he told me two nights ago or two mornings ago that this was an event that i would meet my wife at so I'm just sitting back, eating, relaxing, and just looking around. And then I just hear him again. He says, pick one. And I said, what? <laughs> and he just said, pick one, referring to a wife. So it was just as if every woman there had like an X, but then her, she had a light. So, you know, the Bible says, test every spirit. I wanted to make sure I was hearing from the Lord. <laughs> Not, you know, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just me or something else okay can, so. I, can, can i pick up right here now okay so all of this is happening in the moment that we're all in the same house together i remember like i i would notice him like he was we were completely like on opposite sides of the room i remember i was on the couch fellowshipping with some of the sisters and like i said he was in the kitchen somewhere but we all were in the same vicinity next thing i know <laughs> I was, like I said, I was talking to some of the sisters, getting to know them better. I had my head down looking at my phone. And I remember on my right side, I heard somebody speaking, like, in this deep voice. Like, he be trying to talk like deep, y'all. I'm, just... I'm, just I'm just playing. Okay. Okay. Repent but... on camera. Repent on camera. Stop. <laughs> so, next thing I know, you guys, I look up and he's literally right beside me. <laughs> like, he's literally right beside me. 
and like I didn't know what to do because like it was just a surprise to me so you can you yeah right so here. as I said previously the Lord said choose one everyone had an X on them even ones that my flesh wanted and then there was just a light around her so I just walked up to her she was already beautiful she was already I already heard you preach at that time it was biblical it was on point it was fire so I walked <laughs> up to her and I just, I forgot exactly what I said, but it was just confirmed. As soon as she looked at me in my eyes and I looked at her in her eyes, it was as if we both just fell in love. The whole time, I wasn't interested in her. I wasn't interested in any other woman. I wasn't interested in anything other than preaching the gospel. And then as soon as I looked at her in her eyes at the divine time that he wanted me to, we immediately just fell in love. And then I said, here's my Instagram. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And when's the next time we spoke? It seemed like it's so long. It seemed like it was so long ago, but it really wasn't that long. But it we've wasn't. been through so much in the course of these months that we're going to talk about mm -hmm. that it's so hard to like remember everything. But what happened after that point? I remember giving you my Instagram and yeah, we exchanged Instagrams. And I was thinking to myself, you know, like he, he's a nice guy. Honestly, I wasn't ever really expecting to like see him again. I'm just going to be honest. I wasn't expecting to see you again. I thought we would be like pen pals. <laughs> not pen pals like just me communicating on social media but yeah. you left you had told me that you were about to drive back to your home with your friends so i remember i was like you're gonna drive back tonight like that's a long drive but yeah that was just me making conversation but like i said at that point i never really expected to see him again and that's kind of how the next part of the story starts we went our separate ways um and I didn't forget about you, like, mm -hmm. as I was doing my own thing back at home. I didn't forget about you. Like, I would, honestly, I went through your post on Instagram. Um, okay. I wasn't yeah. stopping you. I remember I had actually went live a couple of days after the event. And then, like, you hopped on and you was like, praise the Lord. Amen. You were to preach. You yeah. remember that? You remember yeah. that? I remember that, yeah. Yeah. And then, He's um, <clears throat> yeah, so after that, I kind of was like, I, hold on you know like hold on i don't know what's going to happen but i feel like something might happen so the next time we actually the the first time we actually like dm'd each other was i remember i had i was i was studying one morning after work and i posted a ray comfort like quote or whatever in the book and it's then the book. yeah it was the book and then <laughs> i remember you swiped up on it and he was like, I was serious too. Yeah, you swiped up on it. Like, okay, so can we stop right here? Was that an excuse to talk to me or like, was he really interested in the book? I'm gonna be honest, it was both because I tried to get that book when I first got saved. It was on Amazon for 400 plus dollars. Me and my friends, we was complaining about it. So I said, yo, how you just, you got money like that to be spending on that evangelism book? But at the same time, I also wanted to make conversation and say, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's so really honestly, what it is. honestly, fun. F <clears throat> it's still going. Go. Honestly, fun fact: I love Ray Comfort. Like, I have probably like three or four of his books. So I have posted it on my story, and he swiped up. And then we started talking about him, and just as he said, like he was like, "That book costs so much money. Like, how do you yeah. have that?" And then it gradually right. went from that to you know, "How's your day going?" Um, then we started talking about the conference and the day that he DM'd me or slid up on my story, we ha we talked for several hours that day until eventually we just ended the conversation. Then I don't think we talked anymore for a couple more days after that. I think it was longer because can I take it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it was actually longer because as we were talking that day, I felt deeply for I felt so in love, but I just had to make sure that it was of God. So what I did was, it's gonna sound crazy, but I read the whole book of Proverbs just so that I could get wisdom and know how to respond to it because I didn't wanna be in my flesh and I didn't wanna be offensive to her in any way. So I read the entire book of Proverbs and then after I read that book, then that's when I said, okay, I'm going to talk to her now because I have the wisdom of God. And one thing that the Lord told me, he said, don't stir up love until it so pleases. That's in the Song of Solomon. That's not in Proverbs, but it's written by the same person. So 
that's why it took so long for me to respond and then when i finally responded to her then she said did you forget what did you say you said something i forgot what it was i remember what it was so honestly i don't know how we ended up getting getting each other's number maybe we um like maybe we exchanged it in that conversation i guess anyway mm -hmm. i remember i would like we would be texting and then like he just wouldn't respond and i was like okay well you know <laughs> you know like whatever you know but i i mean it yeah. wasn't any hard feelings i was just like okay maybe he's busy or something but um i remember one particular time i actually woke up thinking about him and then i just sent him this like encouraging paragraph it was long you remember that mm -hmm. yeah and then he responded back with you know he needed that and sorry for i don't think you actually told me the reason why you um not right away no, yeah not right away because that was between me and the lord right but yeah, nothing to do with yeah, that yeah so after that we actually started talking consistently from that point on we actually talked every day like i remember it would be it, it started like two or two hours at a time three hours at a time and then it gradually was like from from morning until like nine o'clock at night but not the, the whole time just throughout the day we'll be constantly talking to each other so it started with just like the morning text versus and then we would have more conversation like throughout right. the whole day um some nuggets that we should add in here is one thing that i really liked about him is like most guys wouldn't do this but um we actually up until the point that we knew we that we wanted to get married we literally didn't talk past 11 o'clock at night like even strict. as we knew we wanted to get married oh yeah it yeah. didn't lift mm -hmm. until a certain time the lord didn't release us from that until a specific a specific time i think it was it might have been up until we got married honestly i don't remember but right. for a long time we, we just would not communicate after 11 p.m and i know people may say that that's legalistic but me as a preacher i just have a lot of safeguards i don't even now with my wife i have even more safeguards with other women in ministry i don't there's a lot of stuff that i don't do and it's not because i'm weak or i'm frail but i just i'm i'm not losing the holy spirit over anything i've seen way too many preachers fall so right so but, honestly like at first like i'll just be honest my flesh was like that's that's like that's over the top like that's <laughs> that's od but then the holy spirit began to speak to me and he was like okay so would you rather somebody call himself a man of god and then just be talking to you at all hours of the night no right, wow. it's right like y'all been talking all day you can always talk tomorrow or the next day and the next day and the next day so i really res I, over time i began to respect that and then i would start writing to people about that actually like the more <laughs> i would talk to people like i'll be like you know like this is a standard that we're supposed to have as christians we don't need to be mm. talking past a certain point at night because that can have portals and open doors right, for sin yeah, yeah, that can lead to sin right, so right, right, right. i just i also want to say that like god is really what kept us together throughout the whole time until the next time we saw each other because if it wasn't for him like i don't think we would have made it so some of the things that we did was i think you came up with the idea of having bible bible studies every monday we literally have yeah, yeah. we begin to have bible studies every monday religiously like at the same time and ladies this is this is this is another thing that i noticed about him as we started as we began to know each other more um more whenever he said he would call at a certain time he did that even before even sometimes before that time also like you know he never failed to say good morning never failed to say good morning yeah he never failed to say good morning and good night he would always text me um text me when he said he would text me call me when he said he would call me and i would try to do the same you know sometimes i would slack and like he would literally be like you know you need to be on it like be more disciplined so i <laughs> it's really it might sound kind of crazy but no like stuff like that really opened my eyes like wow he's really serious about just everything so i began to like him even more and even more and even more like the more we talk to each other you know i just began to fall in love with him even even more like even more and i'll just be honest you guys like well we're gonna get to that part but honestly like i wasn't sure 
up until a certain point that he was my husband until it reached like him checking off everything that I had prayed for because before I went to this event I was literally praying like almost every day for God to send me my husband and um for him to just prepare me to be a wife like I was not expecting to meet him at all and for this relationship to butt like this so yeah we had bible studies every Monday and I guess we're gonna talk about the next time we um the next time we saw each other which was in that Feb it was in February yeah it's in February yep yeah. so, so we, we would have like three two or three months just facetiming and bible studies yeah so the beginning of our relationship friendship really we weren't dating or anything like that but we were just talking to each other having bible studies and they were very intimate we were learning about the lord together growing mm -hmm. in his grace and knowledge and then it was in February when the Lord allowed us to meet each other again after everything that happened. And it was just beautiful. It was in ministry. We were in the streets preaching. She was singing. I was preaching. I was so and excited. So excited. Yeah. And then we actually got premarital counseling in a way because we met up with my family who I didn't even know for the first time. And then as we went over there, they just naturally started to counsel us giving mm -hmm. us wisdom about marriage and things in that sort and then i remember as i was leaving there we were the next day we were we had the whole day to ourselves yes yes so we went to barnes and nobles we studied the bible together we ate chipotle together we were just having a really good time and we studied a lot as well fun fact he actually put me on to chipotle because when he was like, I'm going to go to Chipotle. I was like... You still don't eat was, it today, though. Like yes, that. I do. I uh -huh. love Chipotle. They're just kind of pricey, so you got to, like... No, 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 no. They're pricey for your order. <laughs> they're pricey for your order. No, they're not. They're My pricey. My order costs about eight twenty. Chicken bowl, that's it. Okay, mine costs about cool. $11. Yeah, that's nice. All right. All right. <laughs> anyway, guys, he put me on to Chipotle from that very... I guess you can say that was that was a date. Like even though we weren't boyfriend and girlfriend, we were yeah, friends. Yeah, that right. was that was you know a date. It was a godly date. So it was a great time. Mm -hmm. Right, and then after that, that's when we just began to try to see each other once a month, and it actually was successful. But the thing that was just so marvelous and outstanding, it was just how outstanding isn't the word astonishing, is how. I would pray for the exact amount of money I needed to get a flight there and for a specific amount of time. And it would always come to pass. It would always be on number. And it was just so much physical evidence. You know, I'm a man that dreams a lot. God blessed me with dreams, but I didn't have any dreams. Then she was my wife. I had none. I had no visions. Actually, in the past, I would have a lot of visions and dreams of me marrying other people that were not sent from God. But this one, I wanted to be sure about. So I would always pray. I said, Lord, I want confirmation I after confirmation <laughs> after confirmation. So the tickets, everything was just perfect. Plane tickets were perfect. The money was perfect. The time was perfect. Everything was just perfect. The council was perfect. And one thing I wanted to be sure about was if she was the right one. So I would talk to other people about her and say, hey, I met this woman in North Carolina. What do you think? Da, 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 da. immediately people say watch out for that Jezebel spirit which is true you gotta watch out for that but I would just say yeah I'm just I'm walking my faith and I'm getting counsel making sure that I don't fall because the word says where there's counsel the people won't fall and there's going to be safety so so say during this time as he said he was trying to look for like confirmation and he was see really seeking God about me and I want to say actually during this time like I had already knew like mm -hmm. I already knew that he was my husband so marriage uh, gradually marriage began to come up like just in the air like in the air right. but as I knew that he was my husband so at around the time I was like telling him that you know I I believe he's my husband he was actually coming back saying God hadn't showed him that and you know <laughs> he had to be sure and um, he still had some praying to do. So after like that first time, I pretty much was like, you know, okay, that's cool. Like we can keep talking. <laughs> we can keep talking and um, getting to know each other. But subconsciously in my mind, in my heart, I already knew 
like I knew he was my husband. So after he had, after he kept saying that, you know, I didn't bring it up anymore. And I just let him, no. I, this is actually what I prayed. I said, God, if, if I'm hearing correctly, you're going to have to actually like show him the same thing. Like, don't, don't let it just be me because I don't, I don't know if I'm hearing correctly, but I'm pretty sure. So if he is my husband, God, you're going to have to like show him because one thing about him is he's really, I don't want to say stubborn, but like in that moment you kind of were because yeah, I was like it. almost a hundred percent sure. I was almost a hundred percent sure that you were, but actually resolute. Is I remember, word. I remember resolute how, I remember word. how, how the marriage conversation came up. Okay. You so said, okay. and I don't know if I had a text message still, but you said that, um, you you said that you like me. You said that you like me. Then I said, what do you mean like me? And then you said, I like you as in one day, I hope to marry you, if God wills. I remember that conversation. If God wills. So if then wills, I had, I was, right, no so <laughs> before that, if I had God. already been thinking like, God, like he's checking off everything that I've been praying for. So... And he was just consistent. So, but in the same token, you guys, like he was going back and forth. Like, I'm just going to be honest. Yeah. He was going back and forth. Like he As would I talk should. about the, he would talk about marriage and then he'll be like, well, I don't know because God has to show me this. Right. God has to show me that. God has to show me this. Right. But you might be, but you might not be. So I was right. patient, you know, like right. I already had in my head that, you know, he might be talking to other people, you know, that we were just friends. I already knew that. So mm -hmm. I was just playing it cool and I just was praying, praying to God that he would show him. So you can start off there. there. Right. I wasn't easily swayed by nothing. I didn't care what she said. I didn't, even you went, you came to me and said, hey, even our church, I'm not going to say the name of it at the time, but she was saying, even all of the church members are saying that they see that we're going to be together. I was like, I don't care what they said. I want to hear from God myself. I'm not letting nobody's revelation run my life. And the thing is, you want to be so sure with marriage because this is a lifelong covenant. There's mm -hmm. no getting out of it, honestly. There's no getting out of it. And I know that Jesus said except for adultery and um, death. But how I look at it, I look at it as Hosea looked at it, marry a prostitute. I don't, for life. Right. And so, life. and so people. Hold on, would, hold on, hold on. For life sorry. is what I'm saying. <laughs> so that's what I wanted to get out. I didn't want to just be jumping into stuff. I didn't care who said what. I told her, I said, first, I need to hear from God. And then I need to hear it from my leaders as well. That's who I need to hear from. No one else. I don't care what they said. I don't care what your family said. I don't care what this person said. I want to know what God said. Simple. And he's going to tell me personally, and he's going to confirm it through my leaders. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. So, yeah, so, like, at this time, you guys, he, he really was just kind of, like, going back and forth, honestly. But but I, but I understand why you were like that. The, the whole time I was, Crazy. like, I, I was, like, like I said, like, 90, 96% sure that he was. So, mm -hmm. it was just a matter of waiting and praying. And so, we kept talking the whole time. Then we would, and the thing about the confirmations is, I actually stuff was falling in line for me too as far as like finances and, and finances and things like I worked an overnight job at that time and my managers would just approve all those days off that I needed at the right time um I would have the right amount of money for just everything so mm -hmm. it worked out it really great. did yeah. like every time we would plan to meet up it just all flowed so the next time we met up was in March mm -hmm. Actually, so when did we start getting serious about the, when did you know that you wanted to, when did you know that you were 100% sure? Because I had been sure the whole time, so. Not, I think about a month and a half before we actually got married. And I was, this is another thing I forgot to say. I told the Lord, I said, I don't want to get married to anyone or be in any relationship until a full year. And the year it was... It was this year and it was in June. And I said, Lord, please strengthen me so that I don't fall into a relationship until this time, if it's your will. And then I remember we just were talking that whole time and we were thinking about that word that I spoke to the Lord. And then I went to some guidance. I went to a person that I see as a mentor and I asked him, I said, yo, when do you think I should marry this person? 
and he said the exact time frame that I had down written on a card of when I didn't want to be involved with another woman. And that was just it. That was mm -hmm. just, it was sold then. And I said, I texted her, I said, all right, I'm official, I wanna marry you. Like, let's get it done. God said, do it now. And he told us not to worry about tradition. Yeah. So even up until this point, we have not had an official ceremony. We hope to have one soon, shortly. And Lord willing, you will be invited if we know you like that. <laughs> but yeah, he just told us not to worry about tradition or religion. And he gave me the scripture. I should have wrote everything down, but I didn't. But Jesus was, Jesus was saying how the Pharisees, they make the word of God of none effect by their traditions. They suppress God by man-made things and the lord told us don't worry about buying no hundred thousand dollar ring and having this crazy marriage and going through all of these man-made things they, he said no just get married by the law of the land so we had to get a marriage certificate marriage license and then it was just it was it was on right there. so i remember the time when he was like yeah so i think we should start looking looking into marriage i was like god is this the answer prayer is this him like finally realized or did you speak to him god because you know he started talking about marriage every single day like we began to plan when yeah, when we were going to get yeah, the yeah, yeah. um we began to plan everything just everything like everything. me moving up there and i'll just be honest with you guys like I, I know some people might be like wow like you really just left everything but when you know that when you have the connection that we had have, have and um or if you've ever experienced like the type of connection we have and god is speaking to both of you about one particular thing you're not gonna you're not gonna like worry about the naysayers because we we had a lot of that like let's just just be honest we were good, we huh? god signed off on our marriage within six months of knowing knowing each other we got married just a little under six months of knowing each other so that was crazy for a lot of people to hear and to witness. So we had to go through the process of like finding somewhere to move, um, like me moving jobs. It was it was a lot. Like that was a right. lot. But the whole time we held on to what God showed us and what He told us to do. So right, and we're also going to make a part two of this video because the testimony is so long and it's ongoing as well. Mm -hmm. But one thing I want to tell you guys, if you're seeking a marriage or anything of that sort, just trust in the Lord, you know, have good people around you that hear from God and that can direct you and help you make the decision because this is a lifelong thing. And also how you're going to know if your marriage is from God, if you already got married, it's going to bear good fruit. So with us, immediately good fruit started to bear. Our faith was getting stretched. We went through hell together and we came out. We're still actually... I mean, we're still going through it, but it's not as bad as it once was only because we've grown together more in the Lord, but it produces good fruit. You guys, you see the content that we put out that comes from a lot of pressing and mm -hmm. crushing and stretching. You guys don't know the stuff that we've been through and we're going to explain in a different video, but I just want to say watch for good fruit. That's how you know if it's from God, if it's producing bad fruit, if she's in her flesh and cursing and if i just i'm not the man of god that i proclaim to be on youtube then that's how you know that it was not of god mm -hmm. but our integrity it remains because of his spirit and his spirit is being it's empowering us more and more each day mm -hmm. and we're seeing an increase in our spiritual life and growth because of jesus christ so that's the good fruit that's how you know if it's from god you don't know if it's from God by you having a big ceremony and that stuff is good. Don't get me wrong. I'd like to have one too. Right. But God says that he doesn't look as a man looks. He doesn't look at the outward appearance of things. So we just want to be sure that we're walking by faith and never by sight. Because if you start walking by sight, you're going to be in your flesh. And if mm -hmm. you sow into the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. Yeah. So like, even though we, we went through trials, we went through trials and tribulations I never d once doubted that he was my husband. Um, and he really taught, you really showed me how to have more faith. Like he, his faith was un unwavering. Whereas I was, I used to have like breakdowns and just like, I was back and forth a lot with certain stuff. <laughs> I really was, wasn't I? But like, he was Sorry. literally like a rock. Like he's, him and God is really what kept me going throughout this whole time. So, 
yeah i'm just grateful for that so the next video we're gonna yeah oh praise the lord for that that's him but yeah god bless you guys we're gonna make another video we're way too tired i don't know about her but <laughs> she was off today i was working a lot today and i'm just <laughs> sleepwalking but all right i love you guys we're gonna pray for you drop comments down below on what you want to hear next? I don't, I'm not used to this YouTube stuff. I'm used to just preaching. And <laughs> you are leaving. used to the YouTube stuff. <laughs> so you're trying to call me a liar? <laughs> no, I'm All right, we love you guys. God bless Bye. you. Bye. <laughs>